Hello everyone and welcome again to an episode of Lock Daddy coverage Mythic Championship 4 day 1 let's get there modern event we're not doing the uh, the limited parts of it cuz we don't do the limited parts of the Mythic Championships because I think it's just not as I don't know entertaining I typically just don't cover limited events um you typically don't know the card names as well either like it's harder to do coverage for those unless you have like a heads up monitor of like everything that's like happening but yeah love to do modern modern's my favorite format uh also love standard and legacy so let's get in there i'm i'm fairly curious apparently hogax the deck is gonna be the deck or i heard was the deck at even though they banned bridge from below so uh yeah, dude, let's get into it. Game one, or round four, game one. Looks like BBD. Ooh, versus Lissette on Tron. Let's go. Always playing Tron. I don't know what BBD's on. Oh, he's on for, He's on prison. He's on the prison blue black prison or blue black urza as it's called now it's pretty much kind of a prison deck oh maybe it's just a hyper thopter assembly deck but yeah it plays like pithing you know it plays a bunch of like prison-esque cards um so what what the urza deck wants to do is just you know make infinite mana and infinite thopters basically Hey, what's up, Crackshot? You watch the BBD? Yeah, I have. I, I follow him on uh, on Twitch. I watch him when he streams sometimes. If I have time, I've met him in real life too. He's really, really down to earth. Really cool guy. Super chill. Uh, the Arcanist Astrolab or Arca Arcanic Astrolab. Anyway, the Astrolab, the new card from uh, Modern Horizons that takes a Snowland to play, and then you, you draw a card when it comes into play, and then you can tap one colorless and tap it to make any color mana. Okay, he's already got Urza on the board. What is this, turn three? Turn three Urza? Seems good. It's already got, what, a 5-5 five, five Construct? And the Pithing Needle's on uh, Expedition map, no doubt. So he's not going to be able to crack the map to get his Tron, his third Tron land. Oh, he's got Thopter Assembly. Or Thopter Foundry. Oh yeah, Urza also lets you tap an untapped artifact and produce a blue mana, so like, yeah, the deck can just, this is turn two, or turn three, and he's got like, just like a board full of cards. And, okay, he's got the goblin, okay, the goblin lets him fetch out an artifact and put it in his graveyard, and then the goblin's tap ability let you take an artifact and put it into play or an artifact of like I think it's CMC 2 or less so it can put in Thopter Foundry and can put in Sword of the Meek it fetches the combo piece that they need and completes the combo oh, it looks like Icar Wellspring is being played in this deck now just for like drawing cards yeah there's the ensnaring bridge again this is like a prison deck it kind of uh, will hold you off until it can infinite you. Wow. Jeez, look at his board. He's got like 11, 13 permanents in play on turn three. That's pretty good. And they're not just zero cost permanents either. Yeah, this is kind of the pace of modern these days. Really fast decks. Goblin Engineer is going to go get Sword of the Meek. 
and boom, infinite thopters. Well, he'll have infinite thopters next turn. And he's scooping him up. <laughs> GG. Alright, are they going to show sideboards? I feel like last time they didn't show sideboards. I guess they're not going to show sideboards. But uh, Tron's going to board in like anything that can interact with artifacts and graveyards. So it's probably going to bring in like... Um, Relic of Progenitus, if, he's, if they're still playing that in the sideboard. Um, it might even be playing... Tron might even be running uh, Leyline of the Void, in which case that's definitely going to come in. Um, anything, anything to target the graveyard or destroy artifacts he's going to bring in. And then probably dismembers for Urza to kill Urza. And this looks like... Is this black and... This is some black and white Death... Oh no, this is Mardu Death Shadow, but it's playing Tide Hollow Skuller and... And Hex Parasite? Well, that's crazy. I haven't seen that card in a long time. Hex Parasite removes counters from targets. So, like, you can kill Planeswalkers with it. Um, I'm not sure that's why that's being played. It looks like it's just playing like four fatal push, four path. And just like tons of hand destruction, including Tide Hollow Skuller. That's interesting. MH artwork. Who's MH? Is that the artist or is that a card name you're talking about? Oh, Modern Horizons, yeah, for sure. Modern Horizons was a very well-designed set. Very well-designed. It's got really good value. The packs are only like 650 so they're not like as expensive as a normal modern set. Like, normal modern sets are like 10 bucks when they come out, usually. So you're paying 350 less per pack, and you're getting like almost the same value. Because you got all the Canopy Lands. They're not Canopy Lands aren't quite as good as Fetch Lands like there were in M2017, but still really good. Worth, worth money. And you got like Renin 6, which is worth like 80 bucks. And you got like all these value cards. Like, I'm tempted to buy a box of Modern Horizons and just crack it and hopefully get lucky and get like really good value. Because you can get you can get boxes for like 175 bucks, I think. People are selling them on like Facebook and stuff. I don't know what the MSRP I think the MSRP is 200 on them. But you can get them for like 175 and and like Hogak still worth like 10 12 bucks. I mean, okay, we, this is our this is the Hogak deck and then against Phoenix. These are the two like you know, premier decks in uh modern right now. Both very strong, consistent, fast decks that you know, can't really be taken apart with one card with one attack strategy. What do I think about Mythic Edition boxes? What are Mythic Edition boxes? Oh, are those... Is that that one that sold out in, like, the first day? Like, and you were limited to, like, you could only buy two of them or something? Is that what you're talking about? Dude, those things are worth so much money. <laughs> Aren't those selling for, like, $800 or something now? 
they were like two hundred dollars retail or something like that, and they were, and they got like the the like the full art foil Jace in there, and like the some other card, Ugin, like the full art alternate art Ugin, and full art alternate art Jace. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not one of those Magic players that tries to get cards like that. I don't really care, but I think it's pretty crazy that people are paying what they're paying for it. The hollows, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of, like, foil cards, to be honest. Like, I'll trade any foil card that I get for, like, just, like, normal cards that are, you know, to me that's of better value. And, like, Magic didn't have foils until, like, 8th edition or something like that. Or, like, no, like, 6th edition, 7th edition, something like that. Like, the game didn't have foils until they were like, oh, Pokemon's making foils and they're making a lot of money on their game. We're gonna make foils, too. Which I mean, that's fine. Some people, some people really like foils, and it's it's good. It's good for the game. I mean, you know, people. You know, it adds value to the game. So whatever. I just am not a fan of. Wow, Pogak just won. Pogak is disgusting, even without Bridge from Below. Alright, looks like you like the eye candy. Yeah, dude, there's tons of people that like to foil out their decks. I'm just not one of those people. I like full art cards. I like the ones that are full art, like borderless cards and stuff. Those are really sweet, but like yeah, foil foil I don't I don't like. Okay, looks like Lissette's mulliganing like a third time. Alright, we're finally into the game. Yeah, he mulliganed to four, it looks like. Grabs a Karn. Tower. Okay, he doesn't have mine, so he needs to get lucky here. Turn two Mind Stone. He's gonna have turn three Urza again. Like that's pretty much what this deck wants to do is turn three Urza. And it has lots of ways to do it. Yeah, Lissette just drew something he couldn't use. Probably another uh, threat. And he's got a Nature's Claim that he can't use. He has no green mana. So not in the best position. He's just drawing nothing. Ooh, Thoughtseize came in from the sideboard. Yeah, he's already got the combo too. He's got Thopter Foundry and Goblin Engineer. It's disgusting. Yep, turn four, infinite combo. Pretty gross. Actually, does he just have the infinite combo right now? Yeah, he's making infinites now. He still had one mana left with the Mind Stone. He's showing him the infinite combo. GG. Well, Tron stood no chance, apparently. Yeah, you gotta have interaction. Tron just cannot beat that deck, it looks like. 
I mean, you have to have, like, turn three Tron with threat to, like, have a chance against that deck, it seems like. Which he did not either game. Alright, this is the Mardu Death Shadow versus Hogak. Leyline of the Void. I just traded my Leyline of the Void that I just got a couple weeks ago. I don't play any decks that use Leyline of the Void, so... Stitcher Supplier, this is a really good enabler for this deck. But I really feel like... Faithless looting needs to get banned. Like, graveyard decks are just, like, completely have just taken over modern. And it's just, like, the field is so narrow. Like, now, it used to be, like, 20, 25 decks that were playable in modern, and now it's only, like, 5 to 10. It's a little bit depressing. How often do I buy cards and packs? Uh, not very often. I used to buy a box of every new set that came out, but like, you you almost never make your your money back when you do that. I mean, I'll buy like, uh, singles more often than not. Like packs, I don't really buy anymore though. I mean, packs are still fun to open, though. I mean, I get them... If I do, like, a... Most of the time, I take credit when I win tournaments and stuff like that. So, like, I can just buy singles with credit. Um, but sometimes I'll take, like, the prizes. I'll take the... Like, if a new set comes out, I'll take packs instead of credit sometimes, so... I'm just really unlucky. Like, I just... I typically do not open very good stuff in my magic career. Although I did rip a Black Lotus in my first unlimited packs I opened. Like when I first started playing magic. I opened a, a Black Lotus. At the time I thought it was junk. Uh, like a Mox Emerald. A Chaos Orb. And, uh, I think a Mox Pearl I opened, too. All of which I thought were not very good at the time. Because at the time, like, everyone was like, Shiv and Dragon is the god card. So everyone wanted Shiv and Dragon. <laughs> or, like, Mahumati Jin. Like, the, just the 5-6 flying blue creature for 6. That was also really popular then. And the Visuvan Doppelganger was pretty good. But pretty much creatures everyone liked. People didn't really know the power of... I did. I did crack shot. I traded them for... When uh, Arabian Nights came out which was like the first expansion set after the base set. Um, Library of Alexandria was like the hype card, right? So like I traded a Lotus, a Mox, and like something else for like a couple Library of Alexandrias and like some two-headed giants from the base set. 
and just yeah just junky stuff I mean Library of Alexandria is worth money but like not as much as like those cards and it's still a really good card like Library of Alexandria but you can only play it in obviously vintage you can only play any of those cards in vintage and Library of Alexandria is a really powerful card um, I mean it's restricted you can only play one of them in vintage but it's not worth as much money as like yeah it feels bad no, what's worse is I I used to have uh, at one time I had like all the I had like eight of the power nine, and I sold them all for like I mean I sold them for what they were worth at the time, which was like you know a hundred dollars each, <laughs> or a hundred and twenty hundred something like that hundred or hundred and twenty each. I mean that was the market value of them at the time, but of course they went up considerably. All right, this is what the uh, the Death the Mario Death Shadow does. It plays Ranger Captain of Eos and just goes and gets more Death Shadows because it goes and gets a one drop. And then the Ranger Captain of Eos can also sack, so that your opponent cannot cast a non-creature spell for the entire turn. So like this deck's really sweet. Like I want to build this version of Death Shadow. I have the Grixis version. But uh, the Mardu one is like crazy. You can like lock your opponent down. And it also plays Giver of Ruins. Like a couple Giver of Ruins which can give your like Death Shadow protection and they can just like swing through blockers. It's pretty strong. This is, uh, what is this? Jund with Season Pyromancer. Cool. Versus White Blue Control. Yeah, these are time walk matches. I don't know if we want to watch this, but I typically don't watch time walk matches. But we can check it out. I do like Jund and White Blue Control, so. These two decks are very good now. The new Jund playing Red and Six, which is the new Planeswalker out of Modern Horizons, is very powerful. And he's going to target Ren and Six with the Vendillion Click, which is probably the best card to get. Looks like he's just gonna slam Bloodbraid Elf here. Just go to town, swing. Cascade. Oh, he gets Kologon's Command, that's so good. I don't even know these decks were playing Kologon's Command main deck anymore. He's probably only playing like one or two of them at the most. Alright, he's going to return a creature with Fulminator Mage and force his opponent to discard a card. So he's got a, That Bloodbraid Elf was a 3 for 1 because it cascaded into a 2 for 1. So that was basically a 3 for 1 right there. It's disgusting. Mom, he's playing Batter Skull. That's interesting. I have not seen Batter Skull played in Control ever in Modern. That's like a first, first for me. It's like he's got Supreme per Verdict, Batter Skull, and some other card in his hand.
Alrighty, Fulminator's a Celestial calling in. Wow, he's got two Batter Skulls in deck. Wow. This must be, like, just straight up a meta call. Oh, it's a Field of Ruin. Okay. Okay, he's going to Supreme Verdict. Not the greatest use of Supreme Verdict, because that creature can get played from the cast from the graveyard to get three more 1-1s. One See, the Empire is really strong. I think the card's really good. I, I think people are just beginning to see how good the card is. It's like he drew another Blood Braid. Yeah, I think Jun's going to win this. They're pretty far ahead. Although he does have Batter Skulls. If he can get a 5th mana and put down the Batter Skull, he's in pretty good shape, actually. I guess this is why that they have the Batter Skull. It's for, like, these grindy games. It might actually be good against, like, Hogak. I don't know. And Dredge. It is a 4-4 blocker that can block, like, any Dredge creature, basically. Except the Narc Amoeba. And it also gains you its life link, so you gain four life every time. So Batter Skull might be really good now. Bolt your face, attack for five. Oh, Liliana is his last card. Gross. Yeah, he's just going to scoop him up. There's, like, nothing he can do. Now, if the Liliana hadn't been played, he might have had a chance. Alright, here's game three. Turn one thought sees. I'm gonna turn two thought sees. Looks like he spell pierced the turn one inquisition. And then he took the cryptic command with thought sees. Dude, I love the Raging Ravine picture. That artwork is so cool. It's good to see some Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Pampero, how dare you? How dare you? Wait, what did he just play? Oh, did he play another Thoughtseize? What did he counter there? Oh, Ren and Six. Oh, yeah. We're going to counter that. <laughs> and then during his draw step... He surgical extractions. He's probably gonna take the cryptic command here. Yeah, he does it to the cryptic. I don't really know why he's playing surgical extraction from his sideboard against blue white. It's not that great. I mean, yeah, cryptic command is one of his more one of his more powerful cards, but like. Hmm. I don't know. I think I'd rather just have like a threat or like something else. Besides surgical. I 
I guess maybe he's thinking he can like surgical celestial colonnade if he gets one in the graveyard. That's kind of a good target. Alright, he's gonna field of ruin his raging ravine. Wait, was it not his turn? Wait, what just happened? Oh yeah, he untapped. He shouldn't have untapped. Okay, you have to counter this, right? Misha, what's up? Hey, hey, doing a little Magic the Gathering Mythic Championship commentary. Alright, he's gonna try to wait for him to run out another threat. He just drew a Day of Judgment. Alright, he's gonna path it, okay. Oh, this, this Jun deck's playing four basic lands. They usually play three. They usually just play two Swamp, one Forest, no Mountain. Oh, Liliana's out. This game's probably over. He needs a Planeswalker right here. Snapcaster is decent, but... Oh, and he drew Ren and Six. That's disgusting. Wow. That was like his best possible top deck. He has, oh no, he has a, okay, never mind. He has Force of Negation, that's good. And then Liliana's gonna edict him, kill the creature, yeah. He needs to draw like a Planeswalker here, like a Jace or a Land is not gonna do it. Liliana's just gonna keep ticking up. Yeah, he needs a Planeswalker. Or even a Celestial Colonnade might be good. <laughs> he draws another Land. Alright, blue white needs some action right now. Teferi would be great. Teferi would be super strong. He could tuck Liliana and then just start drawing cards off of it. Supreme Verdict, not gonna do it. Oh, 
Vendillion click, not terrible. You just wait for Liliana to tick up and then play it. Okay, Liliana can tick up here or tick down, um, depending on what's in his hand. Oh, he just draws Kologon's command. Gross. Oh, counter. Dovin's. Ho, 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 ho. Dude, that would have been so strong if Liliana had ticked up first. He'd be so much farther ahead. Oh, he drew Narset. That's a great draw. He's just going to grab an opt here. Field of Ruin. Okay. That'll take care of a man land if he gets one. Not the worst. Who <laughs> Blood Braid. Great top deck. Oh, and Defulminator. Gross. Okay, he's gonna Blood Raid, probably attack Narset. Take up Lily, yeah. Slowly squeezing control out of this game. Snapcaster, what does that do? Oh, another Liliana. I think he just has to take the damage here. Hope that he ticks up Lily. Snap path, the blood braid. And he's gonna be able to kill Lily, but unfortunately he has another Lily in his hand. And he's out of basics now, so Field of Ruin is actually good. Attacking him down to 11. This game's grindy. Super grindy. Ooh, Batter Skull. Nice. This card's very good against him. Oh, but he's got the Assassin's Trophy. Gross. I feel like you should use one of those Field of Ruins at least. Oh, that was a Wrath of God. Is that a portal of Wrath of God? I don't know what set that's from. That's an old set, though. I want to say that's a portal set. One of the portal sets. It's 
tip, Love Raid. Yeah, this is over, I think. He just always has Liliana out. He's got to deal with, like, multiple things. Planeswalkers and creatures. Yeah, long but good. Tonight he gets running six again. Yeah, he's dead. He has a he has a surgical. He's dead. GG. All right, round number five. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? It looks like another Jund. Ooh, Jund versus humans. Okay, okay, let's go. I'm into this. I'm into this. I think this strongly favors Jund though. Jund has a lot of removal and hand destruction. Although he didn't have a turn one play, so. But he does have bolt in hand. Tarmogoy for an six. I guess like this version of Jund is more uh, value oriented, and there's less like removal. I think it plays like three or four lightning bolt a couple fatal pushes um and that's it for removal i think it plays like a, a kologon's command i guess that's technically removal but it only does two damage because it's playing ren and six now that basically p takes the place of like some of the removal it used to play Dude, Renin 6 is so good. He just puts it out, minus 1, deal of damage to anything. It's just so strong. Like, even though it's a mi it's a 2-drop Planeswalker. So good. Renin 6 is so good. Although, shit, dude. This Humans player's got it all. It's like Reflector Mage is coming out. Boom. Running Six is dying now. Boom. Commanding board presence. Now he can't bolt the champion of the parish. He's going to be in big trouble here soon. <laughs> Humans is going to go critical mass. See, this is, this is where the the Jund deck fails a little bit, where it used to shine. Like, it used to have more hard removal, so it could just, like, wreck humans most of the time. But now humans is a more even matchup, because it plays more, like, value and less, like, re hard removal. To another Thalia. Valley is so annoying. Yeah, all he's got is a lightning bolt and a skews. I mean, I think he just lets this resolve. He's got two mana to play the lightning bolt. Oh, he's going to play it now. Okay, he's killing the Reflector Mage. That's weird. Am I doing arena after commentary? Probably. I might break for dinner. I usually break for dinner and then come back after like, you know, 30, 45. And then stream for like another like 3 or 4 hours.
But yeah, we can play some arena. With our deck that's 1-0 right now. Yeah, go 7-0 with it. Be good. Yeah, he's got this enormous champion of the parish. Yeah, that's gonna make short work of the John player. He needs to find like a fatal push or like Yeah, he's got a lot of dead cards now, like hand destruction's gonna be like doing nothing for him now since basically all of his cards are played. Okay, Drew Fatal Push, all right. He's still in it. All right, he can eat a creature and block Thalia or the Reflector Mage. So it looks like he's just gonna attack with the Champion of the Parish, unless he has like a, oh, it looks like he has a Mantis Rider in hand. It's ideal. Oh no, it's a deputy detention, never mind. I mean, I think he still needs to kill the champion of the parish, right? Oh, and a Manus Rider. Jesus. This human player's got it all. Yeah, he has to kill the champion. Seven damage. Barely hanging on here. Yeah, I think he's just dead. There's like nothing he can do. He needs a board wipe, which he doesn't have before sideboard. Yeah, he's at five. He's dead on board. I don't know why he's not conceding. I guess maybe if his opponent doesn't attack with everything, but that's not going to happen. He's trying to bluff something here. Bluffs typically don't work at high-end magic. I mean, they do for some things, but st when you're sitting at lethal... He's bluffing hard. GG. What do we have here? What is this? Phoenix versus. Ooh, is that Grit? Wait, wait, wait. Blue. Oh, he's playing Esper Control. Okay. Little Esper. Little black, blue, white. I'm gonna go. I want to go back to this. Yeah. The Jund humans. I'm into this. I'm into it. I'm glad Jund is back. When Jund is not a playable deck, you know it's the format's kind of unhealthy. Alright, here we go. Game two. No turn one for the Jun player again. That's pretty bad. Uh, turn one, Noble Hierarch. Oh, turn two, Ren and Six. He's just going to kill the Hierarch. Dude, this card's so strong. Like, Ren and Six, if you're on the play, this card is just too good. It kills any one toughness creature you put out turn one. 
which is a lot. A lot of decks play turn ones, like a lot of them do, because the format's so fast. And Ren and Six just punishes it so hard. Like, absurdly hard. I wonder what he named with uh, Meddling Mage. Probably some removal. Either Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt. Maybe Damnation. Because I know Jun plays like one or two Damnation sideboard. Is Liliana Valley named? Okay. Hand. The humans player's hand is stacked. He doesn't have a vial though, so he can only play like one thing a turn. Oh, Liliana's coming out now. Another incredibly strong Planeswalker. Probably he's going to play Mana Strider here. Kill Liliana. Yep. And then he can Phantasmal Image it next turn and kill Ren and Six. Actually, that Mana Strider is going to get Assassin's Trophied, probably. Into Blood Braid. Oh my god, so good. Cascades into Fatal Push, so he protects Ren and Six. Okay, he played a little bit greedy there. Like he wasn't playing around Phantasmal Image or anything. But okay, the Humans player is in a bad spot now because he doesn't want to Reflector Mage a Blood Braid Elf. 
because he can just play it again, and then it gets he gets another cascade off of it. And then running six is getting dangerously close to ultimate. Yeah, losing that Manus Rider was huge. Boom, just does a damage to it, kills it. <laughs> yeah, Renin 6 can just kill Phantasmal Images straight up. <laughs> I don't think there's much. The humans player can do at this point. He's just not being able to two spell like without like vile like your power level goes down considerably with humans. You can't like throw everything out. Well, I guess you can kill Ren and Six here. That's good. Oh, but no assassin trophy. That's not going to happen. That's a cool plane. So it looks like Australia or something. I like it. I wonder what set that's from. Is that like 6th or 7th edition? 6th edition? I think 6th was the last black border set before they went white border for a while. Until like 9th, I think. And then they went back to black border. Black border is always the best. They start out with black border. Black border. Alpha, beta. Alpha, beta. Unlimited was white border. And then they did like white border through like fourth edition and then fifth was black border and then it was black border well actually arabian nights was black i think they like wanted like the, the the base sets to be white border and then like the expansion sets to be black border but that's just like nah we need the uniformity come on all our cards need to look the same to some degree Alright, he finally got run in six. Okay. If he has any removal for uh, that phantasmal image, it's GG. He's at one life. <laughs> yeah, you can't even tap those two canopy lands for mana.
kill a Thalia's lieutenant? 3-3? Three, three. Oh, he's gonna kill the reflector mage, okay. Alright, he has to chump the Tarmogoyf and he can block the Blood Braid. To zoom in. What? I mean, this game is totally over. He's got one life. Come on. I mean, maybe not. Give him like a point zero 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 one percent chance to win this, but. He's got Reflector Mage, wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh, Ren and Six, okay. Okay, he's scooping to Ren and Six. Ooh, we got Jace on seven counters. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get back to the main game. All right. Game three. Turn one Hierarch for humans. Turn one Catacombs for Jund. Into turn two Manus Rider. Seems good. Swinging for four. like he's gonna assassin's trophy the manus rider Pro red and pro black, pretty good against Jund. Pretty much immune to all the removal except for Liliana.
Oh, that's a good one. Plague engineer. Naming humans. Although, I bet he would have liked to kill that Oriok champion. Ooh, look at that zoom in. Boom. Freebooter. That's a good one. Whoa, boom. Look at that camera work. Uh, he's probably taking Ren and Six here. Maybe Liliana. Yeah, Ren and Six. It's the right call. Oh, he draws freaking Anger of the Gods. So good. It's not going to kill Oriok Champion, but it'll clean up the rest. Oh, he doesn't have the other mana, actually. He doesn't have a second red. You know, if he draws a, man, a red mana, it's going to be bad times for humans. Bad times. Yep, he did it. So he's going to have enough mana to eat a creature with the, the scavenging ooze, make it a 4-4, then anger the gods, wipe the board except for the Oriok champion, and still have a 4-4 scooze on the board. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Oh, but he has a Thales Lieutenant that's so strong. I don't know if he wants to trade the Oriok Champion for a Scooze, though. Although the Scooze is going to gain him a lot of life. So, hmm. I wonder if he just takes the 4 damage here and goes to 1. So he can keep the Scooze. I mean, there's no creatures left to eat with the Scooze because Anger of the Gods exiles. Oh wait, never mind. It's only a 3-3. Three, three. Never mind.
I think you just play Renin Six, kill Thalia's Lieutenant, and Karma Void, right? He's attacking? I guess he was trying to, like, get something for free there. Bait him into a block or something. I mean, he's got 25 life. There's no way he's blocking there, right? Not looking good for humans now. Drew the Liliana. He's gonna be able to remove that Oriok champ. Oh, that Oriok champ is just dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be GG. Humans has like nothing powerful enough to combat this board. Like, he could stack his deck at this point, and it wouldn't matter. That's so good. He can get his cycle lands back. Dude, Renin 6 is so strong. So strong. GG. The time walk back about Hogak and Grishel brand. Eh. Just kind of look at. See if Grishel brand won that one. Grishel brand actually could win this easily. But. Looks like not this time. Yeah, I don't know. He's gonna throw the breach. I don't know what that creature is. Some giant red creature. That's Borborygmos. Borborygmos. Enraged. 
Seven six trample when it deals combat damage to your player, reveal the top three cards of your library, put all land cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Discard a land card, he deals three damage to target creature or player. Yeah, it's over. Hogak wins again. Hogak. Alright, we got round number six. Let's do it. Tron versus Urza. Okay. We saw this match in the first round. And, uh, Tron seems not very well equipped to play this against this deck. He's just gonna like pithing needle the chromatic star. That might be the play here. Cause I feel like if he had a a map, he would have played it. Oh, he didn't play it. Okay. I appreciate the speed in which this German player is playing the Tron deck. I appreciate that. So many people just sit there like, you know, riffling their cards when they can just pass the turn. I respect the fast play here. You love speed too? Yeah. Dude, I love watching Shota Yasuoka. He's like this Japanese control player in the Hall of Fame, and he's just like, that dude plays faster control than anyone ever in the game of Magic. It's like actually insane. He's a beast. Like, what a beast. We found the power plant. Boom. But he doesn't get Tron until next turn. Is it too late? If he has, a, if he gets an Urza here, I guess he's only got two lands. He can't play the Urza. Oh, he drew the Urza. I oh, know he's got two Urzas. Okay, Urza overload. Doesn't have the mana to play it. I wonder why I didn't play Urza's or Mishra's Bobble. He should have played Mishra's Bobble last turn if he was trying to get a hit land drops. That was kind of a misplay, I think. He kept that in his hand, I don't know why. You don't get anything for like, I mean, unless he's playing Psy Master Thopterus, which this deck only plays it in the sideboard versus like aggro. Um, 
He should have played that Mistress Bobble. That was a misplay. Okay, now Thopter Foundry is going to get exiled. Oh no, he's exiling a land. Okay, yeah, that's a better call, actually. Alright, so he's got the Thopter combo out, Sword of the Meek, Thopter Foundry, but he doesn't have Urza, so it's not an infinite combo yet. Ooh, can he play Ulamog? He can play Ulamog. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be bad. He's just going to exile three permanents here. Oh, he's going to exile a card from his hand? What? Okay, I'd exile three permanents here for sure. All three of his lands. I'd get rid of them all. Yeah, he's just going to scoop him up. Ulamog is such a beast. What a beast. Card is bonkers. I mean, it's like hard to play, obviously, because it's cost 10 mana, but shit. ETB, exile 2 permanents. Gross. Dude, a lot of people are playing jo or, uh, Tron. That's kind of surprising to me. Or at least all the a lot of games that are on camera. That's 3 Tron players we've seen so far. Alright, looks like the Urza deck mulliganed. Alright, game two. Well, he's got turn three Tron, so... He's got Teferi, not Urza. Okay. Alright, he's got Karn out, and he's exiling stuff. He exiled the uh, Mind Stone.
All right, he cracked the Mishra's Bobble and looked at his own top card. Didn't like it, so he's going to crack a fetch land to shuffle it away. It's a good way to filter cards. Oh, he's gonna thought seize him. Gross. Yeah, that was like an ideal top deck. Since he has Ulamog. That 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 <laughs> Urza player got incredibly lucky. Incredibly lucky with that. Cause if Ulamog comes out he fucking loses. Like straight up. And he happened to have Teferi out so he could play it on his turn <laughs> after the draw step. Ooh, Blast Zone, that's a good one. So he's going to be able to put a second counter on Blast Zone and then possibly use it next turn. Kill Thopter Foundry. Did he just top deck Urza? He did. Wow. This kid. The top decks. Let's go. Ooh, he drew Ballista. That's good. I mean, he's probably going to exile Urza here and then Blast Zone. The uh, Fopter Foundry away. I just miscalculated. No, that's actually a five, five token walking ballista. Okay, apparently, like, maybe uh, just Joe Lissette was really unlucky. Uh, 
He seems to be doing pretty good with Tron against this Urza deck. Although these, the, the, the Urza configuration, the configuration of the Urza decks might be different. Um, BBD's version might be more explosive, like you can potentially go off faster. Yeah, he's just GGing. He's not going to be beat Walking Ballista at this point with tons of mana to pour into it. Walking Ballista is such a good card. I remember when Walking Ballista came out, everyone was like, this card's terrible. It was only worth like $5 or something like that when it first came out. Everyone was like, this card's bad. Like, no, this card's insane. Like, I saw that card, I was like, this card's good. Like, what are you talking about? This card's crazy good. Oh, it's like Hogak. Is this Hogak on Hogak? Dude, look at Sam Black's hair, man. Whoa. He's got the, like, mad scientist thing going on. Got the mad scientist thing going on. So they both had Leyline. Okay, they're both playing Hogak, I think. And she had Force of Vigor to kill the Leyline. <laughs> so good. Sam Black, yeah. Still a pro. Still doing his thing. Yeah, he's been around for a while. Not a whole lot going on. Got a Grave Crawler attacking for two.
There's decks playing Seder Wayfinder. That's funny. Just a way to get card advantage and play a creature. Because they're constantly cycling through and discarding cards. Looks like he's just gonna straight up hard cast Venge Vine on his next turn. <laughs> Swinging for six. Looks like even with all the sideboard cards, she just ended up using four cards for basically just two effects. She basically two for one herself twice. Because having two two Leyline of the Voids, not ideal. And then having to pitch a card to force a vigor to kill one card. She uh, she basically two for one herself twice, so now she's got like nothing. And he assassins trophy one of her lands. And this deck doesn't play basic lands, so Yep, down to one land. Oh apparently his version plays at least one basic land, hers does not. Wow, how sad is this? He's just winning with a grave crawler and a venge vine hard cast. <laughs> That's funny. That's too funny. Oh, so lucky. Top decks the one drop creature. Gets her vision finds out. I don't know if I would attack with any Venge Vines. I would just sit back, I think. I don't know. Maybe attacking is the right, right move. Oh, okay, he's got a Ley Line. He's going to hard cast a Ley Line. Dude, let's go. Let's freaking go. Hard cast that Ley Line. Oh, he's trying to bait. He's trying to bait her into getting both Venge Vines killed, and then he'll lay line.
Oh, she's taking the bait too. Oh, he's not gonna block it. Okay, I'm really confused what his plan is here. Really confused. Yeah, he he should have played Leyline last turn. That was just really bad. Yeah, your ley line does nothing now, buddy. He got way greedy with that. That was like when I was playing the other night, trying to get a four for one with my a with my uh, board wipe. He was trying to do trying to get way too much. That blew up hard in his face. Should have dropped the ley line, buddy. Should have dropped the ley line. Should have dropped it. Neoform versus Eldrazi Tron. Oh, I've seen this deck, this new deck. The Devoted Neoform. I don't know. This one has Devoted Druid. Okay, this is, I haven't seen this one. All right, yes, I have. I've seen the two versions of this deck, I think. Basically, Neoform is one green, one blue, sacrifice a creature, go get a creature from your graveyard or from your library that costs one CMC higher. Or up to one CMC higher. And then it plays Devoted Druid and. The one that doesn't let the one, the other card that came from Almond Cat that doesn't let your creatures get minus counters, so it basically produces infinite mana. Yes, deputy detention so strong. Snaps up the graph digger cage. Just kills his two mana dorks. Probably a good call. He's not going to be able to quarter calling now. Or uh, Eldritch Evolution. Oh, 
Oh, thought not, top deck. So strong. Who he plays Grizzlebrand? That's funny. Maybe I should put the, uh, it would be better if my picture's over here. Yeah, you can see more of the, you can see more of the board now. I mean, I will, it will cover the picture of the player, but I don't think that matters very much. I think it's better if my picture's on the other side. All right, he's got Karn the Great Creator now. And I don't know what he grabbed. Dude, what is with your shuffling, buddy? Oh, and he top decks the infinite mana. <laughs> Get wrecked, Ari. Get rooked. Top decks the Vizier of Remedies. Yeah, you know the combo, Ari. Stop being a douche nozzle. Alright, GG's. Oh shit, total number of copies being played. 145. Force of Vigors. One forty six Narsets. 229 force negations. Damn, 260 car and great creators. 379 carry and feeders. 422 hogax. All main deck. Dang. Dominguez. Dominguez. Sutcliffe. The Subtles. All right, what do we got? Round seven, Tron versus Phoenix. Okay. Uh, I think this matchup favors, I mean, definitely favors the person on the play, but I think this favors Phoenix. Maybe not. I mean, turn three Karn is always just strong, but... Alright, he's got Tron turn three. He's not going to be able to play a threat turn three, though. A big threat. Alright, 
right, Tron assembled. He's going to be able to play Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Sack Sanctum of Ugin. Go get a Karn next turn. And then play Karn the next turn. Yeah, I think... I think uh, Tron might have this game, just straight up. Yeah, he's just going to Ugin minus two, kill both thing in the ices. And just like went off that. And then Ugin will still have five tokens. So he, he'll need to get like two Phoenixes to kill the Ugin. Oh, he's not going to sack Sanctum of Ugin. Okay. That's, uh... I guess he wants to play Ulamog, that's why he's trying to keep as much mana as possible, but I think just a solid next turn play Karn. I guess he can play Worm Coil Engine. That's not the strongest play. I think Karn's stronger than that, but Aria of Flame. This card's scary. It gains you 10 life, but then, like, every time you cast the Incident or a Sorcery, it gets a counter, and then you deal that many damage to target a uh, player or Planeswalker. So he might very well be able to kill the Ugin this turn, but he has another Ugin in hand, so... Yeah, he's gonna Lava Dart Ugin, get one damage off the Aria... And then lava dart it again and get two damage off the RA. Yeah, he'll kill the Ugin here, but. Yeah, now he's got like nothing. Except the Arya, and if the Arya dies here, which it's going. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have another Ugin. He has Ulamog and Worm Coil. Yeah, he's gonna go get another tower, play Worm Coil, then play Ulamog on his next turn. Although I still think just like playing Karn this turn and just killing the, the Arya would have just been like, I don't know. I guess that leaves him vulnerable to a Phoenix which would kill the Karn. Now he taps left. <laughs> yes, he does. At least he put—he doesn't put, try to put his creatures behind his lands. I hate people to do that. It's not the correct way to play. Oh, he drew Finale of Promise. That's really good. But he didn't draw a land. Bummer.
Dude, Thought Scour is such a fucking savage picture. Like, look at that shit. He's like, Aah! It's like some clawed hand, like, holding his head down while he's drilling his brain from, like, three different places. That's some jacked up shit right there. I'm actually surprised that that card got approved. Like, some... There are a few magic cards that are really, really, like... Like, scarily, like, violent, bloody. Like, there's even blood coming out of his eye and, like, dripping down his face. I bet that card barely, like, made it past the, like, approval process. <laughs> There's a few cards that look like they just barely made it, but I think that's cool. Like, I'm, gl I'm glad that they, like, you know, the grit, the gritty artwork. GG, Ulamog says, this game's over. Tomofumi Okada. Bernardo Santos. What is this, Phoenix versus Phoenix? No, Phoenix versus Hogak. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Okay, game two. We got some uh, can tripping. Oh, spell pierce get wrecked. He's got all the interaction, and he's got force of negation in his hand. Let's go. No, he fizzled out. He was trying to get a Faithless Looting, which there is on the top of his deck, but he had no way to pitch his, his, his other Phoenix, or his one Phoenix, rather. Is he going to force a negation? Okay, here's a, here's a risky thing for this Phoenix deck. If it gives up too much of its components to, like, cycle through, then it just, like, can't do anything. Because it, it has to play multiple spells on its turn to, like, do anything, essentially. Season Pyromancer, okay. This is this a sideboard card or are they main decking this now? This card's really good. 
discard two cards, then draw two cards, and for each non-land discard it, you get a 1-1 one, one red elemental token. Really good. Really solid. And then you can cast it from your graveyard, too, and you get uh, two more 1-1s. One, or you exile it from your graveyard and you get two 1-1 one, one elementals. Alrighty, finally found Tron. If he has a threat here, then he's going to be able to sack Sanctum, get another threat, play that, which the next threat's going to be an Ugin, or a uh, Ulamog. Alright, he's got he found three phoenixes though, okay. That's uh nine, ten, eleven, thirteen damage. Actually maybe he just wins this. He needs a uh an Ugin to board wipe this. Or a uh Oblivion Stone, or he's gonna lose. There's too many targets he can't like. Thirteen damage, boom to the dome. That's what happens when you get lucky with phoenixes. Boom. It's crazy. Oh, he drew O-Stone. Oh my god, are you kidding me? He drew the O-Stone! Oh, damn. Dude, these people, these feature games, man, they've been top decking like, like mad. Top decking it. I mean, like, he's going to be able to get those back next turn. Yeah, this is only going to save him for one turn. Really, the card he wanted was Ugin, because Ugin exiles. Yeah, he loses. Dude, the beta bolts. That guy has beta bolts. Gross. I want them. I used to have beta bolts. Back in the day. When beta bolts were only worth like a dollar. Beta cards, like for the first like 10 years of magic, were just not worth very much. People didn't really care. 
Same with basic lands. Like, basic lands didn't become, like, this commodity until, like, seven, eight years into the game. Like, no one cared about basic lands. It was really weird when, like, there started being all these, like, you know, full art basics and all these, like, rare, like, basic lands. All right, game three. Looks like he starred, chromatic starred, and then ancient stirrings. And we got one faithless looting on the phoenix side. Ooh, stirring number two. Looking for that mine. Ooh, didn't find it. It's unfortunate. Oh, he's grabbing Ulamog? Okay. I mean, you might as well grab a threat. He doesn't have any threats in his hand. Well, I think he has a Karn, but yeah. Oh, he's been delaying and clicking him. Okay. During his draw step. Dude, look at that German Vergessensisysen. <laughs> the German, uh, The German Oblivion Stone. Had some long name. Vergessen Slice and some blah. There are some long German words. Gebertstag geschenkt means birthday present, by the way. Nice little word everyone should know. <laughs> All right, he found the mine, Tron Online. Alright, he's got the abrade for it. Looks like he's got Karn Ulamog in hand. Oof. 
Doesn't like that. Shakes his head. <laughs> Ceremonious rejection of the map. I don't know why he countered the map when he's already got Tron out. I think that was a bad play. I think he countered the map 100% of the time if he doesn't have Tron. But if he's got Tron and he's got 8 mana, like, save the ceremony of rejection for one of his payoff cards for sure. Wait, why didn't he... Oh, is that a Spire buff, Clanel? Oh, he, if he had another mana, he could have Lightning Bolted and got the Phoenix back and killed Karn. That would have been really... I don't know, it would have gotten Karn to one. Karn's a beefy motherfucker. If you plus four him, he's got ten loyalty. This is absurd. Absurd. Yeah, now his Karn's like unkillable. Shattering spree, that's not going to do any good.
Alright, now he's going after his lands. And when he plays Ulamog here and just kills the other two lands, right? GG. Can't really beat that when you got no lands. No time walk matches? Yeah, it was a pretty good match. I don't know. I guess we're going to round eight. White blue control versus Esper control. Okay, this one's going to be a grindy one. This is going to be grindy. Looks like just playing some lands out for the first two turns. Dos Frenchman, yes. Guillaume Waffle Tapa. That guy's a really old school player. He's been playing since the 90s. And uh, Arnaud Hochmiller. 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 Never seen this guy before. I think he's new, probably. Or new to the Pro Tour. I don't know. Apparently, Guillaume is not a fast, not a fast control player. If that had been Shota Yasoka, he would have been immediately reacted or not reacted to the casting of Teferi. bounce the snapcaster right I think you just bounce the snapcaster draw a card and you don't want it attacking you
Go, oh, Jason Mind Sculptor. Okay. Bounce that. <laughs> This is a night. Oh, he's just gonna scoop him up, dude. Like, that's like the nightmare. He just knows. Like, Teferi Time Raveler makes it so you can't cast any spells outside of sorcery speed. So, like, against a control deck, that's so good. He can't cast any counter magic. He can't cast any flash for Snapcaster. Like, it's just over. Once he got Jace out, too, it's just like, what can you do? Like, there's no Planeswalker board wipe that's played. That would be the only thing that could get you out of that situation. Glagowski. Glagowski. Alright, we got... What is this? Hogak. Dude, is that a Hedron Crab? Is that a, actually a Hedron Crab? Okay, Hedron Crab has Landfall, and target player puts the top four cards into their... Or is it three? Three cards into their, life, into their graveyard? Previously, Hedron Crab was just in mill decks. But apparently, they're using this to mill their own decks. It looks like Hogak versus Hogak. All right, game two, let's go. Ooh, turn one Thoughtseize. Dude, control playing Thoughtseize. So good. Reminds me back to Grixis Control. I have a friend that plays Grixis Control, and he was at FNM yesterday. Uh, and he went 4-1 with it. Like, I think, like, now that, like, you know, you've got, like, Narset and, like, some other cool things, Control has, like, got kind of a better foothold into Modern again. Now he's going to take an Opt from him. Mm -hmm. 
dude. Waffle Tapa has all lands in his hand. He kept a hand with six lands or five lands and a Thoughtseize. Okay. Did he mulligan? Six or five, six, seven, eight? No, he didn't. He kept a land with six lands and a Thoughtseize. That's crazy. I mean, like, hitting land drops in this mirror is, like, really important. But if he, like, sneaks out of Teferi again, this is going to be, like, game over. Oh, he draws another land. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, he's probably just going to run at this Monastery Mentor. Which can get out of hand really quick. Yeah. I mean, his thinking was that, like, he doesn't want to go down to six cards against a, a match that's going to be a grindy match. And it's better to keep a hand that's that's land heavy than land light, especially with this, with two control decks. Because, again, like, you want to hit your land drop every turn. Wow, he drew another land. A blast zone. At least it's a utility land. It can actually do something, but... He lands a Narset now. Yeah. Grabs another Narset off Narset. Narset. Alright, he finally drew something to Fairy. I think that's pretty good here. I think he just plays to Fairy and draws a card.
Dude, I wonder if they're speaking French to each other. Do you think they are? They probably are. Oh, he couldn't draw a card off. He couldn't draw a card off because Narset's in play. I totally forgot. Dude, Narset's just static ability is opponents can't draw more than one card a turn. So he basically just had to throw out to Fairy and plus two him, and that's all he did. He couldn't draw a card off of it. That sucks. Dude, Narset's so good. Yeah, his hand is absolutely stacked. Just straight up stacked. And then Jace. Does Brainstorm on Jace actually say draw? I think it does. So he can't Jace either. That's so bad. Dude, Narset's so good. Yeah, this is a beating. This is a little bit hard to watch. This is a little bit hard to watch. Seeing that he's got seven, like, gas cards in his hand against his opponent's lands. <laughs> Feels bad. Now he's bouncing to fairy drawing a card. Yeah, there's I, I there's no coming back from this. I mean, he's not missing land drops either, but he's just got a, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of action.
what am I eating tonight? I think I'm gonna get some PF Chang's. Old Chang spicy chicken. It's delicious. Like, they're consistently, like, really good. Like, I used to go to this different Chinese place that was more of, like, a mom-and-pop type place, but they, like, like, one in three times, it was just not the greatest. Like, their chicken quality, I don't know. But, and then I switched to P.F. Chang's, and, like, P.F. Chang's is just, like, consistent. Like, every time it's good. Yeah, chili, nice. crock pot chili did you like make it yourself or like did you get it at a restaurant or did you like pop a can cooked it nice was it traditional chili with no beans, or did it have beans in it? With? Good call. Good call. I've never had like the traditional version with no beans. But apparently that's how it started out. Ugh. Feels bad. Mr. Teferi, welcome to the party. Yeah, he's just like, I'm done. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. GG. Alright, what do we got? Left. Great on burgers and hot dogs with no beans. Yeah, for sure. Hardened Scales versus Hogak. Okay. It's good to see a Hardened Scales deck. He's 6 and 1, so, you know. I'm doing well. Yeah, beans are good. I think it's... I personally would... I don't know if I would like it without beans. I mean, I'm sure it's good, but it's just not as good without beans. You ever notice that like all like Mexican food is just like the same like five ingredients, but it's like just in different like you make it in different ways. <laughs> That's why Mexican food's so good, because it's just got five solid ingredients that are just good every time. Just throw them together in different ways, different sauces. You know, hey, chili is good for you. I mean. beans is good I mean most Mexican food is pretty healthy um, except for like empanadas well empanadas are fried aren't they 
Aren't they like the least healthy like Mexican food? I mean, like, except for like some carbs and some stuff and like cheese, like Mexican food's pretty good for you. Like burritos are really good. And I, the burritos that I eat, I get brown rice and I just get like a little bit of brown rice. I don't want like a lot of carbs, you know? So just like black, you know, black beans have like less carbs than, nor than, re than pintos. Um, you know, a little bit of brown rice, chicken, cheese, and like salsa. I'm not a fan of guacamole. Or sour cream, really. And re really, both of those are just, like, not terribly good for you. Well, I guess, I guess avocados are, like, decent. They have some good stuff in them. But they do have a lot of fat in them, too. Ooh, force of Vigor. This card's great. Yeah. For sure. Alright, looks, looks like both players have no, no gas left. Who's going to win? Although he's got two faceless lootings in the graveyard, actually, so he's still got stuff to do. Faithless looting. Faithless looting kind of needs to get banned. I kind of want to see Faithless looting out of modern. It's kind of just like taking over modern. Like all the like top decks are playing that card. Four of. Four of. Okay, I think this is a really smart move. Okay, he basically got rid of his board. Unfortunately, um, he gets to replay grave crawlers from his graveyard. Um, he's not going to be able to do it this turn. And then he just found a he just found a vengevine too. So he has no sack outlet though. So I think that was the right play. I think getting that the sack outlet off the board was the right thing to do because he basically had the engine going. And if he didn't do that, he'd, he'd be losing right now. Or he'd be losing next turn, for sure. A hard cast binge wine, okay.
How much is left on the VOD? Uh, this is the last round, so not very much. Uh, like 20 minutes ish, maybe 15. Swinging it for four. I'm swinging it for six. Oh, he's got lethal. Holy shit, dude, this guy's beast. Oh, wait, don't, shouldn't he sack? Yeah, dude. That was so smart. He just didn't even let him have another turn. He just straight up had 12 damage. Boom. Dude, that's the power of the Hardened Scales deck, man. You can do crazy tricks with, like, Walking Ballista and uh, Hanger Back Walker and Arcbound Ravager and Hardened Scales. You can just, like, move around so many tokens and just do so much damage. It's badass. That deck's pretty sweet. That was the last round, I believe. Yeah, all the matches are done. We got... We got oh, we only got one eight zero, and it's Arnaud Hockmuller. Hockmuller. The Frenchman, 8-0. Let's go. And Waffle Tapa, the other Frenchman, 7-1. We got... He's a Jun player. So we got two blue-white players. We got a... Bernardo Santos. I don't know what he's on. Um, we got... That's a Jund player. Alan Wu. I don't know what he's on. So we got two blue-white control. Jund. Uh, Tron. I don't know what Calcano's on. I don't know what these guys are on. Yelger. Yelger. Um, I think there's at least three Hogak decks there. Uh, he's on um, Hardened Scales. Yeah, there's actually like he's on uh, Urza. There's probably another Urza deck. Ben Holes on uh, Phoenix. Yeah, there, there's like a pretty good split of decks at least for day one so far. But yes, we have reached the end of day one. And I will be bringing you day two. And possibly, we might do day two and day three tomorrow, depending on how fast we get through day two. Because it is only, we are only doing the constructed rounds, so it's only five rounds of constructed. So, but day three, they show you like every single match of the top eight. So I don't know if we're going to have time to do day three we might, we might we're probably just going to split up into three days it's just easier that way i don't want to be commentating for like you know seven eight hours straight it's just it, it the quality starts to wane during the last couple hours if i if i commentate for that long it's just really really uh taxing to be talking for like that long like as as intently on it but yeah we'll be back tomorrow for day two of the mythic championship uh, number four, modern. Uh, this video is going to go up on my YouTube channel, which is going to be in HD, 6,000 uh, bit rate, scathing HD, and it's lock underscore daddy. You can watch it on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash lock underscore daddy. Follow me on Twitter, which is lock underscore daddy one. And yeah, we'll see you next time.